Let's say you live in US, perhaps in Connecticut, and you're a bit different, odd maybe, and you're 19 years old, right? Then you need a proper vehicle to stand out from the crowd. I have received many mails and comments and messages on Instagram from young people, you know, you know, the, the sleek, beautiful people, asking me which Porsche to start with when you have a limited budget but want to join that Porsche family. Therefore, I went out and bought another Porsche, a Porsche 944 S2. Looking out the window, admiring your car is for a petrol head a true blessing. It does not need to be a new or a fancy car, it just needs to be yours, yours only. The 944 last production year, the 944S was replaced by the S2 with a muscular body from the turbo models. Yes, I know, it is a vintage vehicle and you need to be strong as a 19 years old or a matured or standing on your own feet because you, with the 944 you will stand out of the crowd when your friends are looking at the Japanese cars or perhaps the BMWs. Ooh, but this ladies and gentlemen, it is a proper ride on that ooh, engine. I believe this is a very cheap car, the Porsche 944 S2. This price starts at 15,000 euro and the mint condition can go up to 30,000 euro. I would say this is on the lower range, just below average. And um, nevertheless, it is a true beauty to watch, drive and experience the Porsche brand. But why a Porsche 944 S2? Well, the answer you will find underneath the hood. The, uh, natural aspirated again you know i made a review of this car you will have a link above but this is a vintage car and yeah it has totally given up oh i have to fix this Ooh. you know it's not about the spare parts that that you need this is a 25 dollar it's about the time and the love you have to spend with a vintage car and uh, there is a lot of people that have the possibilities to drive a new car but driving a vintage car is you know something difficult it's something that not everybody can do it makes a statement <sighs> new attempt why the porsche 944 s2 because of the engine ladies and gentlemen this is a natural aspirated engine, three liters, it's a huge engine, four cylinder, and the connection you get with a natural aspirated engine in comparison to a turbo, it's much, much more direct, I would say, which means that if you are about 19 years old, 18, 16, I don't know, care, driving a vehicle, starting with a natural aspirated engine is perfect because then you could learn how to connect with the engine, you know, balance the car with your throttle in a way that other cars are not able to do. That's why you need a natural aspirated engine as your first car. And the S2 shares a lot of components from the 944 for turbo that makes this let me put it this way less horsepower less speed less wear i love babbling but it is the true it is cheap to buy this car and the depreciation i would say is less to nothing that's why this is the perfect car because you will have a sports car experience you will have low maintenance cost and on top of that the money that you have put into this car you will get back all of it if not more when you sell it <laughs> oh yes ladies and gentlemen this is a proper portion that's the perk of buying a vintage one or any portion for that matter it always brings up that joy driving on the b roads you might have to heal and tow yourself and 
push that four cylinder engine and this is what I mean. This is the reason I would love to have the first Boxster Entertainment with a four cylinder displacement because it gives so much joy having that sound. It's a different sound, yes I know, but ooh, it's so enjoyable. Oh. <laughs> Ridiculous how engaged I, you know, the, the thing of driving a Porsche is is you know that it was built from the very beginning to be a driver's tool. It was not meant to be a commuting tool and someone realized that, oh, hey, should we do it more drivable? No, from the very beginning, from the very, very beginning, it was set to be a driver's tool. Oh, that's what I love about Porsche, especially the old one, because you feel that they have thought through everything about the driving and suddenly someone say, hey, uh, should we have a place where we could uh, zero out the odometer? Sure, and it's on the most ridiculous place. It's in the uh, ventilation and you know, nobody cares about the ergonomics. Like the only ergonomics that they think about is the steering wheel, the seats, the pedals and the thrill of pushing down the throttle on a proper B road. <laughs> I'm not sure you get this experience in a BMW. Turn it up, windows down, we sing along. The summer night has just begun. The moon is bright, let's have some fun. Perhaps you already have a partner and perhaps he or she have different opinion on which type of car you need to well, get all the practicalities done in life. You wouldn't believe how much you could fit inside a Porsche 944. And don't forget the back seats. Well, actually, I'm not sure if we could call, call this back seats, but they are foldable. And when you fold everything down, you can easily fit four wheels inside. Actually, me and my son went camping with our large tent and we fitted everything perfectly in this vehicle. This is a car that has been properly driven. It has only gone 120,000 kilometers and that is 30 years, remember? It is well kept, this car, in terms of all mechanics. Well, it has its patina around it, but let me tell you one thing. It's, for me, difficult. Perhaps when I look at the car sometimes, I say, oh, I need to get it repainted, but then, the kind of history that it has been through kinds of erase. I look at the old 356 and I say to myself, whoa, it's so renovated. You don't have a feeling on what has been done. Remember the video where I visit Porsche Center Stockholm on the seventh Porsche anniversary? One of the exhibitions there was the 356, the, ever, the fifth produced, I think it was. And that really, got me thinking about what is vintage car all about. If you haven't, you know, renovated it, but maintained it properly for, through the years, for me at least, that's worth more money than something that has won the Concours d'Elegance and it's, you know, someone has put over $100,000 into renovating a vintage car. I'm not sure if you're following me, but, but this car has its bumps. It is much cooler to drive a vintage car in comparison to a new one. Believe it or not, but there are much more people in the world that could finance a brand new vehicle in comparison to have the knowledge to maintain and the courage and the patience to drive a vintage vehicle. If you're considering to buy a Porsche 944, please, before you go ahead, decide if you want to modify your vehicle towards racing or I don't know, towards, uh, I don't know, some modern look that I don't understand. Nevertheless, design that in beforehand. There are plenty of 944 on the market today that has already been started to be modified by one of these and continue modify. The ones that are still stock, leave them stock.
This vehicle, for example, only a few things has been modified. First of all, the Alcantara steering wheel. Have a look at the wear. This is what I've been talking about when it comes to the Alcantara. This is the end result of end wearing of Alcantara. I have the original steering wheel that I will fit in this vehicle to make it stock. And there is one more thing that needs to be adjusted. The wheels fitted on my car is the 17 Boxster Cayman OEM Porsche wheels. Beautiful wheels, yes it is, and I think they fit this car perfectly. But stock Design 90 was the way to go. And I have had this wheel, but they, I thought they were, well let's put it this way, they were according to me beyond saving. But I gave Interra in Stockholm a call to see if they could save them. Welcome to Interra, and I'm going to explain to you the importance of owning a vintage vehicle. It's not just about taking care of the car, but it's also to taking care of all the parts because they are getting harder and harder to get hold of. This is Interra Workshop, and I'm going to show you how you could actually make a big difference, not just for, for your vintage car, but for others preserving old items. And that's what I'm going to show you with this Lamborghini wheel. This is a Lamborghini wheel, a vintage one, right? And look how damaged it is. It is truly damaged, but if you think this side looks bad, you should take a better look on the inside. This is a wheel I believe many of us will throw away, but Interra has the craftsmanship to really put this on the road again with very high quality. And that's what we need to do, ladies and gentlemen. We need to preserve not only our car, but the spare parts that we find around it. And that's extremely important. Remember, this society puts a lot of demands to us to these days, pollution. Well, the car, well, let's face it, with the combustion engine, it pollutes the world. But we could show the world that we preserve and create sustainability by driving our vehicles for a very, very long time. Remember, more than 60% of all the vehicles that Porsche has ever produced is still in traffic. And that's, ladies and gentlemen, it's what I call sustainability. And that's why we need to preserve our vintage cars with the spare parts that comes with it. Did they save them? They look brand new from the factory as they did back in the 90s. Disclaimer, I did pay for my renovation and they, this is not sponsored, but the way they treated and the way the service and, and the, the work they've done are beyond and that's worth mentioning. Interra in Stockholm, link below. Regardless, I think Fitting these Design 90 wheels will really, really pick up the pace towards the stock S2 that I wanted. But I have to wait until I can fit my Design 90 wheels because I want to tune my car, making it go faster. And the first thing that you need to do if you want to tune your car is to fit brand new tires. I am going to get tires from Michelin, the Plot Sport 4, that I think is one of the best street tires that you can get on the market, and that will increase my performance. But I will not get them until September, so I will stick with the Yokohama until they arrive. Woo! <laughs> Ridiculous how old cars this can you know, give you so much feeling when you're shifting the gears and you know, it's a vintage car. Yes, you have to be a bit more gentle when you're changing the gears and, and yes, it, the heel and toe, etc. Mm. But what a ride. Mm. One big perk with this vehicle is that it is a Targa. I'm going to show you how easy it is to remove the roof. The first thing you have to do is to pay attention to the rear fitting point and then push the close button and release it from the roof. When that is done, take your right arm and lift up the roof that is actually now possible to lift up. Then push the open button to make sure that, that you are able to, to lift and hold the, the, the roof. 
Uh, it's a bit, it's an old car, yes I know. There we have it, and now the back side of the roof is open, and then I just release these points that I have above here, and that's it. Now I have to go outside. From the outside, it's quite straightforward since you have lifted up the rear of the roof. Just lift it a bit more, take a solid, in, a solid grip in the center and then just push off the roof. And here we go, you have your targa. To put the roof back, it's just reverse order, but pay attention to these arms because that's where I see the most faults taking place. When you have fitted the front end of the roof, just lay it upon these arms and then make sure you push close bottom and make it to the very end of its position. At that point, the roof is not locked. What you need to do then is to push the open bottom again to its center position where the back side of the roof is actually locked. Well, I'll tell you one thing. The um, Targa is the best when it's only tilted in the back because when you open the side windows, ooh, you get some comfortable drag. Well, cancelling the air conditioning system if you live in Sweden, because let's face it, we don't have any proper summer in Sweden. It rarely gets over 25, 26 degrees. So therefore, perfect to have a Targa if you run the 924. Woo! And this is a proper ride, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> if you are around 19 years old, I guess it takes a lot of courage or maturity to buy a vintage vehicle such as a 944S2. But if you do, well, hats off. I believe that you might be more tempted to buy the Super or BMW in a vintage vehicle. I guess you always will be an underdog. Remember though that the Porsche 944 is a perfect teacher with the gearbox fitted in the rear axle. Well, that gives you the perfect weight balance 50-50 between the front and rear axle. And if you wonder where to acquire this ridiculous t-shirt, then head over to Nick, Nick Murray's YouTube. Oh, it was so close. Anyway, thanks everyone for watching. Again, have to run a second take. You know, it's getting a lot of energy by doing this. At least energy. I'm actually using my energy. Whew. I need. Uh, I need. Uh, to, this is a training. No, 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 no! You're not allowed to go here. Oh, this one is rubbish. I'm going to talk about that in another video. Who? And don't. I'm just checking it's not going to hit the camera.